In tonight's reading, the end is near. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan on this Monday, the 30th of January in the year of our Lord 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we end our day at the beginning of this week with God's Word and prayer as we do. We are now um, up to week five, day one of reading through the New Testament in 2023. And that brings us to Matthew chapter 21. Uh, and here we, I mentioned the other day that um, the transfiguration is sort of the, the mark, uh, the marker that Jesus is now going directly to Jerusalem and directly to the cross. Uh, things are coming to a head. That's kind of the home stretch of his ministry, so to speak. Uh, today, uh, we have one that we are we are right in the last week. Um, we are going to read about about Jesus' triumphal entry on Palm Sunday, and then we will begin to hear uh, a series of conversations and a series of parables that Jesus teaches about the kingdom of God and various other topics. So uh, let's turn to our text. Matthew chapter 21. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. And this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the Son of David, they were indignant, and they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise? And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. In the morning as he was returning to the city, he became hungry, and seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, May no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. 
and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive, if you have faith. And when he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching, and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he changed his mind and went and he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. Here another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable end and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. Thus far, Matthew chapter 21. Okay, so there is far too much in there to even begin to try to comment on. I mean, what do you what do you focus on? You've got the triumphal entry that, that uh, on Palm Sunday. You have the question of Jesus' authority. You have the parable about the about the. No, you, you have first the encounter with the fig tree that withered. And then you have the parables about the tenants who would not give the owner of the vineyard what was due. I don't know where you even start with all that. 
Suffice it to say today, Jesus enters with authority. He enters with purpose. And he alone actually understands understands what's going on, understands what, is, what he's there for, understands why it's necessary. And thankfully that power, that wisdom, and that authority that we see illustrated here so powerfully in this chapter, all of them are marshaled for one single purpose, and that is to save you to suffer and die for your sins, to redeem you out of this dying world, to give you a place in his kingdom. And as if that weren't enough, this same man who goes with such purpose, with such wisdom, with such authority, he is still ruling over you and over this world directing everything according to that same singular purpose. That is what faith clings to. Even when it seems like he has forgotten you, even when it seems like he is refusing to give you the good that you need, whether or not you deserve it, this is what faith clings to, the promise of who he is and what he came to do and his ability to carry it out no matter what. Sorry if we can't get any more specific than that, but there's just way too much in that chapter. So let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, thank you as always for joining us as we end our day with God's word and prayer. God willing, we will see you at this same time tomorrow. In the meantime, God's blessings on your night.